Unlike our primate pals, many people still have these foot arches. They help us move. This arch is like a built-in shock absorber for your feet. It's what allows us to bounce. There's another one. It's called the transverse arch, running side to side on the top of your foot. Think of it like a bridge that helps keep your foot in shape. Research says this arch is a big deal too. It's responsible for about 40% of your foot's stiffness. Simply put, it's like the scaffolding that holds your foot together. When scientists snipped the transverse arch, the foot lost a lot of its firmness. But when they cut the bottom arch, it wasn't that dramatic. So, is it a modern human thing? Nope, these arches didn't just pop up yesterday. The transverse arch has been around for 3 million years. The bottom arch showed up about 1.8 million years ago. We might as well continue with another element of our feet before moving up to other parts. Our pinky toes are also more important than they seem. Whether you were born without one or have lost it, you can still walk. But pinky ones are important for keeping us on our feet. They provide balance. Inside your foot, you've got 26 bones that team up to make sure you don't topple over. Small toe is a part of this balance work. Our ape ancestors needed their toes to grab, claw, and swing from trees. Today, we've traded our tree climbing skills for comfy couches and binge watches. Okay, let's move up a bit and talk about the appendix. You might think that it's useless, but nope. When a human is in their mommy's belly, this organ starts to do its job. Around the 11th week of development, it starts churning out special cells that produce helpful hormones and compounds. The appendix helps train our immune system's troops, ensuring they're top-notch defenders. It also collects all sorts of foreign substances, aka antigens, from our digestive tract. Yet, as diets evolved, this piece shrank like a deflating balloon. Unlike most other vestigial structures, the appendix isn't always harmless. It can turn into an angry little fireball. By the way, vestigial organs are the ones that have lost their primary ancestral function. These structures mostly lack an apparent purpose. Another famous vestigial example is wisdom teeth. Those are pointless and have been causing us trouble for ages. Yet nearly 95% of us have them, and 90% might even have to deal with the drama of an impacted wisdom tooth at some point. If you don't have them, you might consider yourself lucky. Here's an additional interesting fact about wisdom teeth. Even though your teeth have a mineral softer than what's in shark teeth, new tests show that they're just as resilient. The coating on shark teeth is actually similar in hardness to the enamel on a human wisdom tooth. It's because their surfaces are made of mineral crystals held together by proteins. These prevent them from shattering easily upon impact. So the difference in how we and sharks use our teeth comes down to their design, not their toughness. Anthropologists have examined ancient skeletons. They think our ancestors needed these extra teeth to chew tough stuff, like roots and raw meat. Back then, those extra teeth came in handy. But then, we discovered cooking, and suddenly, our food got softer, and our jaws got smaller. Geneticists have their own take on this subject. It involves a gene called MYH16, which seems to play a role in both brain size and jaw characteristics. Yet, the exact part it played in our evolutionary story is still a bit of a mystery. Now, another pointless thing is the eyelid. Well, not the regular eyelid. You know, that little pink thing hiding in the corner of your eye. Birds and some other furry pals use it to fend off dust and debris trying to mess with their eyes. But in us humans, it's mostly vestigial. Meet the Palmaris longus. About 85% of us still carry it around. Maybe you also have it. You can test it by putting your hand on a flat surface and making your pinky and thumb meet. If you spot a little tendon band doing the limbo in the middle of your wrist, then you've found it. It was there for gripping stuff and swinging around like Tarzan. We can carry on with the grasping trick. Even before you're born, around 16 weeks into your time inside your mom's tummy, you're already practicing your grip. You start by grabbing onto the umbilical cord. When you finally arrive in the world, 
This reflex helps you hold on to things. Fun fact, small monkeys can hang on one hand for ages, thanks to a similar trick. Yet, we humans lose this super grip when we're around three months old. When you're still in your mother's womb, you also have a mini tail. But as you grow, it disappears, and those tiny vertebrae become your tailbone or coccyx. Humans and our ape cousins don't have tails like other animals. Our ears, too, have vestigial muscles. They help animals hear better and express their feelings. But in humans, these ear muscles don't do much. We figured out other ways to listen and show our emotions. Yet some of us can still wiggle our ears with practice. Surprisingly, toenails also count as a vestigial thing. I mean, they function as the initial line of defense. They protect the body against harmful microorganisms. In our evolutionary journey, we used our fingernails and toenails for defense, digging, and climbing. In the modern world, fingernails still come to our rescue, whether it's for peeling fruit or that sweet sensation of scratching an itch. Yet, toenails have retired, but hey, we can apply nail polish to them. For fashion's sake, they certainly work for many people. It's not just humans who have useless limbs or organs. In 1798, an anatomist examined a peculiar bird incapable of flying. He documented his observations. This avian species was none other than an ostrich. Ostriches and cassowaries are just a few examples of birds possessing vestigial wings. Anatomically speaking, these are rudimentary wings incapable of granting flight to these hefty creatures. Yet, they aren't entirely devoid of function. They serve the purpose of maintaining balance during rapid running. Plus, they elaborate courtship displays, helping birds attract potential mates. Now, when it comes to animals, a lot of them glow, too. Around 76% of ocean animals, including jellyfish, worms, sharks, and sea stars, are bioluminescent. They have a compound called luciferin that reacts with oxygen to create light. And for them, it serves such purposes as stunning predators, attracting prey, or warning others of danger. We humans can glow too. Unfortunately, this glow is super faint. Our eyes can't see it. Our bodies emit light, but it's about a thousand times dimmer than what our eyes can detect. Scientists found that our glow changes throughout the day. It's the faintest in the morning and the brightest in the late afternoon. Our faces glow more than the rest of our bodies. They think it's because our faces get more sun exposure and have melanin, which has components that can boost light production. Some body tricks distinguish us from the rest of the animal kingdom. For instance, do you know that humans are the only animals capable of blushing? It seems we've got the exclusive rights to this rosy-cheeked phenomenon. When we find ourselves in an embarrassing situation, our blood vessels dilate. That's what gives us those blushes. Embarrassment is a pretty complex emotion. It's all about understanding what others think of us. This might be too advanced for other animals. Interestingly, bald uakari monkeys can also blush, but not in the same sense. For them, this is a show of their good health. Speaking of good health, we should honor our gut. Your gut includes the stomach, liver, and more. It's often called the second brain. This second brain has its own nervous system. It has a hundred million messengers. They send info to the rest of your body. Even if the gut-brain connection is cut, it keeps working. It ensures your digestive system functions on its own. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.